This truly shocking new development in China is going to show you, it's going to reveal just how far behind the West has fallen. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. This is wild. I mean, I, my brain is shocked by this new charging station. The world's first 100 megawatt class heavy duty truck supercharging station has just come online in the Sichuan Yuan Chi district. There is a heavy duty truck megawatt supercharging station, right? It's already commenced operations and it has a staggering, I don't know how it can put out this kind of power, but it's built for primarily for trucks and buses and anything big. But honestly, you could charge your super fast charging Chinese EV there as well if you wanted to. Nearby, though, there are some sand and gravel mines. So a lot of the commercial vehicles at these mines will be using these megawatt charges. Now, get this, right? The investment cost 21 million US dollars, 21 million US dollars, which is sounds like a lot of money. It's built across 11.5 acres, but it has a capacity to put out 100 megawatts because it has 18, 18 1.44 megawatt superchargers. I mean, that's 18 1,440 kilowatt superchargers. Now, Maybe it can't put out, I don't know, 1,440 to all 18 at one time, right? That's possible. But it's going to have to put out at least half those numbers. Otherwise, what's the point of installing them all? So the amount of power going to the site must be truly staggering. Because in addition to those 18 1,440 kilowatt charges, there is 108 600 kilowatt liquid-cooled supercharger base. 108 of them. I mean, here in Australia, we don't have a single one. We don't have, we don't, we don't have one 600 kilowatt charger. At one single location in China, they have 108 of them, plus, uh, plus 18 1,440 kilowatt chargers. I mean, there is nothing like this anywhere else in the world. Absolutely nothing. Apparently, the setup is designed to be able to facilitate charging for 700 electric heavy-duty trucks every single day. With a projected daily charging volume as per carnewschina.com, exceeding 300,000 kilowatt hours of energy every single day. 300,000 kilowatt hours. Now, apparently, there is also a one, mega, a one megawatt solar carport and two 215 kilowatt hour wind liquid intelligent cooling energy storage systems. So I believe that means that there's two 215 kilowatt hour batteries on site. Not particularly big, but um, I'm guessing what happens is the solar carport sends electricity straight into those batteries. So it's just like a, a little way of getting basically free electricity. Now, Car News China says this, using Huawei megawatt supercharging equipment, the station is compatible with 3.5C supercharging heavy duty trucks, enabling drivers to achieve a charge for five minutes and drive for 100 kilometers. So five minute charge gives you 100 kilometers of range in a truck. We know that truckers have to stop for every four hours, they have to stop for about 30 minutes. So, I mean, in a truck, if you're stopping for 30 minutes, you'll be able to add 500 plus kilometers of range to your truck in 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, really, if you really thought hydrogen was the future of the trucking industry, which I used to think that, I think now you've got to consider that it's not going to be. Truck owners will save apparently around 21 US cents per kilometer, 21 cents per kilometer in energy costs, amounting to 21,000 US dollars every single year. I mean, imagine if you imagine if you have an internal combustion truck, say a diesel powered truck, and you're paying an, an additional twenty one thousand US dollars annually versus your competition. It would be so difficult to survive. 
Now, apparently this means it saves the cost of a truck in three years. The cost of a truck is only around 60,000 US dollars. So you've paid for your truck in three years with the savings you've gotten. Uh, imagine how many trucks are gonna be purchased in China. They're gonna go absolutely ballistic. For station operators, the boost in charging efficiency is expected to improve operational efficiency by over 15%, says Car News China. So an innovation to the station is apparently its enhanced uh, ability to interact with the grid in a non-negative way. Huawei's solution integrates smart solar and grid forming energy storage to create a source grid load storage microgrid. So it sounds like there might be more batteries on site than what I previously had thought. The microgrid can operate both connected to and independently from the main grid, effectively mitigating the impact of high power charging on the grid and addressing stability concerns. The microgrid leverages a virtual power plant to interact with the grid, maximizing the consumption of renewable energy, reducing costs through peak valley arbitrage and boosting revenue, thereby achieving a vehicle pile as in charger and vehicle and grid synergy. The PV storage charging integrated solution deployed at the station generates around 5,000 kilowatt hours of green electricity daily. It's quite a bit, 5,000 kilowatt hours. I mean, to be honest, with the kind of volume this place is going to see, it would only cover a few percent of the load though. However, the electrification of heavy duty trucks will reduce carbon emissions by 45,000 tons annually just for trucks using this site alone. Now, as I said, um, these are the kind of stations we're going to start seeing all over China. China already has plenty of 1.4 megawatt charging stations, but not this, not to this degree where there's this many built at one location. They've got plenty of 1,000 kilowatt chargers, and this is happening all across China. I mean, while we watch, we're kind of sitting here twiddling our fingers. Our governments are arguing with each other, talking about how we can tax electric cars, you know, talking about how we can... Um, make sure the government gets their money back from EVs. While China is saying, yeah, okay, that's great. We're going to subsidize them. and We're going to take over the world because everyone will be buying our electric trucks. We'll be able to, I mean, think about this, right? These cost savings apply to Americans. If a Chinese uh, company owner can run his trucks on electricity for a saving of 21,000 US dollars a year, and he can hire Chinese workers who are cheaper than Americans, why would your company not basically be overtaken by some Chinese company, right? That's coming up with a more efficient way to do business. It's got half the overheads you do, or if not less than that. This, this is one of the reasons people keep saying, oh, it's just because of the Chinese government subsidizing things. And that's certainly part of it. But it's also because China is moving into the future much faster than the rest of the world. And I think to truly understand that, you've got to go to China. Therefore, I'll be taking a couple of tours over the next 12 months to China. Myself and just a few of you. I'm talking limited numbers, probably 20 people on each tour. If you're interested, send me an email and I'll give you some more details. Thanks for watching.